Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to be creating my first project using the action story kit from Allie Edwards. Now I do not yet have the physical kit so I am just using the digital kit to create a hybrid layout. Before we get into the actual process of putting this all together I am going to take you over to my computer on Photoshop Creative Cloud to show you how I created two of the elements for this page. The first is this journaling card here, which was just altering a three by four into a four by six. And the second piece is this photo that I printed out on some matte photo paper. And I will show you how I used a journaling card in order to create this piece right here. So once I have everything printed off, we are not printed off. Once I show you how I got everything printed off over there, we'll come back over here and uh, go through what the next steps are going to be for this spread. So to make the spread that I'm working on today, I'm actually going to be altering two of the digital cards that came in the action story kit. So the first card that we are going to work with is the this card. So it's just the word this repeated over and over again. And I want this to be a six by four photo instead of a three by four. So what I'm going to do is open up the original three by four card, and then I'm going to create a new canvas. Just is just file new basically. And I want to create a canvas that is six inches wide by four inches tall, 300 pixels per inch and create. So then from here, I can go back to my original card, select all of it, which I use control A, but you can also go to select and all, and then uh, copy, which is control C and paste, which is control V. And once I have that over here, I can then move it all the way to the edge and it will light up with purple lines all the way around it when I get it into the right spot. The other way I can see this is if I've got that layer selected, I can, I can select Control T or Transform, and that will give me the outline of just that three by four. What I'm looking for is just to make sure that it is lined up on this left edge, the, you know, so that it's all the way there. Once I have that, I can hit Enter, and then I want to go ahead and uh, merge these layers together. So I'm going to come over to the layers panel on the bottom right hand side, right click, well actually I'm not going to right click yet. I actually want to select the first layer, hold down the shift key, and select the background layer as well. Then I can uh, right click on here and select merge layers and that's going to give me my background or this card. I would save it just like this and then for me, let me change this to black. For me, I did go ahead and add my text right on here because I wanted to have my text typed. So I just made boxes of text for each of these little this titles and then called that good. So that is the first one I altered. For the second card, you just X out of these, I am going to create a full page photo out of it, but I'm actually going to have it framed inside of this yellow. So the card I'm using for this one says uh, the most reliable way to predict the future is to create it. So I want this to be a full page size. So that's the first step is to go to my crop tool and I'm going to crop this at 6.875 by 8.25. Um, those are the sizes that I use. You can also use like, I think it's like seven inches by eight and a quarter, something like that. And that would work fine too. I just like mine to be a little bit, a little bit smaller than that. So then I'm going to pull up my crop all the way to the top of the card and the bottom of the card, just so I have that scale in there. I like the distance that the oval is from the top and the bottom. We'll hit enter and it's going to make it pretty big. So I'll grab my, um, Spyglass here, I'm going to right click and fit it on the screen. And that looks pretty good here. Then I need to fill in these two sides with that same yellow color. So I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool from the tools panel, then select the yellow. So that's going to bring that yellow color down into my paint or you know whatever my primary color that I'm using, I think is what I am going for here. And then we'll grab the paint bucket tool. With the paint bucket tool, I want to fill in the two sides and then I'm actually going to fill them in again and then maybe once on, or a couple times. I'm just going to keep, whoops, 
I clicked the wrong button. I'm going to keep filling them in until these whitish lines that you saw dividing it are gone. So now everything looks good and we're going to move on to the next step. So the next step is to grab, um, well, first of all, is to come over to the layers panel and you can see that there's a little lock on the layer. So this is locking it as the background. When a layer is locked as a background, you can't actually do a whole lot to it to alter it. So I want to unlock the layer and now it's going to change this to layer zero. So then from here, I will grab my magic wand tool. Uh, this may be on the quick selection tool that might show up here. If you click on that and hold it, you'll be able to select from a menu of tools and I'm going to, se to select the magic wand. Next, I am going to click on the yellow portion. It's going to highlight all of this. And then I am going to right click and layer via cut. So now I have the oval in the middle is its own layer and the yellow portion is its own layer. So I can hide it if I want to. Um, if I hit it, then you would just see the oval. So then if you wanted to only print the oval portion or a photo in the shape of an oval, which I'm about to show you how to do, then you could print it like this by hiding that layer. Or you could hide the oval layer and just print this on cardstock, maybe cut that out and put this on top of something. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this particular file. What I want to do is to clip a photo into this oval. So I am going to open up a photo. I have one right here. It's already edited, ready to go. I am going to select all of it. So control A and copy, control C. Then I'm going to come back and make sure that I am clicked onto the oval layer, uh, which for me is layer zero. Then I'm going to paste. When you select a layer and you paste something in, the new item that you paste in is going to go directly above the layer that you had selected. So I want it to look like that because next I'm going to right click on the photo and create clipping mask. So what this is going to do is if I hide my yellow portion, it is actually making my photo into that oval shape. So now with the photo layer selected, I can transform it, control T, and change the sizing of the photo to fit inside of this oval because it is very big at this point. So let's bring it down and then when I hit enter, it will clear everything up. So this is the photo that I'm going to be printing. Now, like I said, you could print your, your document just like this and have that photo in an oval shape, uh, or you could print it with the yellow around it, which is what I'm going to do. So, so my plan is to print this document right here off, or this image with the yellow around it. I'm going to print this off on matte photo paper because I want the colors to be super vibrant, but I also, I'm actually going to be doing some stitching on top of it and uh, working with the matte photo paper for stitching is easier than working with the glossy photo paper. So I am going to be doing this on matte. Um, but that is the second piece that I created. So we've got this piece here, and then if we go back to this um, layout, this is kind of how I design my layouts before I print everything off, just so I know I'm printing exactly what I need. Um, so then I'll have the card I'm printing off on plain white cardstock. The photo with the frame is going to be on matte photo paper. And then I also have this fabric embellishment. This was one of the add-ons for this kit. I am going to print that on some canvas paper just to put a little bit of a different texture into this, uh, into this spread. And I most likely will back it with some kind of pattern paper. So that is going to be that. So now that I've shown you how to do this, how I did this, let's go ahead back over to the craft table and I will show you what the next step I'm going to take is. Okay, so the next steps that we are going to be working through here are, um, well, this section on the left side is going to be fairly easy. I have a three by four photo, the four by six journaling card. I've picked out a few different pattern papers, just scraps that I've had in my scrap pile. And then I also have this uh, ephemera piece, which this was a fabric patch that I printed off on canvas paper. And so all I'm gonna do to it is just trim it out here. And then this I'm going to add to the pattern paper. 
um, but we're going to figure out which pattern paper I want once I get uh, the photo side done, this large oversized photo side. So let me just do that so I can put these away. So um, that is the left hand side. So that will come back and do a little bit later. For the right hand side of this spread, what I'm going to do is trim this photo out. And actually, I'll just do a, do that while I'm talking to you guys here. So I'm going to trim out this photo. This was printed on matte photo paper because I felt like it would be a little bit easier to work with for what I want to do next. So we're going to trim this out and then my idea is to stitch around the oval in a somewhat rainbow pattern to give a bunch of color and texture and all of that to the other side of this page. So I went through my embroidery floss that I have here at home and found pieces that matched the words. So I had this card here and I just pulled out the colors that I felt like would go with the words in here. So then, um, so there's our photo, that's all done. So then I would next go ahead and hole punch this because I don't want to get everything stitched on here and then hole punch it and end up punching through my stitching because <laughs> that would ruin it. So we're going to hole punch it and now this is ready to, to stitch. So I am gonna show you how I will get started stitching on here and then I'm going to take this off screen and do this while I watch a TV show or something over on the couch. So I have, this is my stamping mat, but basically it's just a foam, just a foam mat that I can use to stab into <laughs> because I don't want to um, poke my fingers or anything like that. Then I'm going to grab this pokey tool or all um, this one actually came with my mat, but this is a tool that I definitely recommend for things like this. If you're going to do hand stitching or for things like adding brads, that, that type of thing on it. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to poke holes, you know, trying to keep them spaced out decent enough <laughs> so that they are, uh, in a line around the oval here. And I'm probably just gonna do this one at a time. So I will do the first strand all the way around, and then I will come back and do the holes for the next color, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, in terms of the stitch that I'm going to be using, I am just going to do a straight stitch because um, since there's going to be so, I would like to have a bunch of different threads. So because there's going to be a lot of it, I figure um, that the straight stitch will give me texture without being too much texture. My other favorite type of stitching to do on projects like this is a, chains, a chain link, uh, but that one tends to be really bulky. So I, I think that might be too bulky for what I want this to be. So we're almost there. We're just gonna poke all the way through. And then um, once I get this done, I will tell you guys how to get the stitch started. I'm just gonna get this and then go ahead and thread up my needle. Okay, so now that I have the holes poked all the way around the photo, the other thing that I'm going to need, and I've got I've got my, th my embroidery floss threaded onto my needle, I am using all six strands. So uh, in case you're wondering about that. And then the other thing that I'm going to use is just some washi tape in order to hold the thread on the back side. So I'm going to start here at the top and I'm going to go from the back to the front. So we'll just pull this all the way, whoop. <laughs> sure, we'll put all the way, all the way through. All right, let's do that again. So we're gonna pull this all the way through until we have the last little bit, the last tail there sticking out of the end. Then I'm going to grab a small piece of washi tape and tape that down. So that's gonna make it so it doesn't move. And then I am just going to straight stitch it. So I'm going to go from the front to the back into the next hole. So pull that one through here. Okay, and then we're going to, to go from the back to the front in the next hole here. And then here's where it gets a little bit different. Oops, let's make sure I don't have a knot here. 
That's the one thing with having a long piece of embroidery <laughs> floss is it likes to get knotted. Okay, so then I'm going to go back through the hole before. So this is going to fill in that stitch here on the front. There you can see it. So then you skip to the next one, go all the way through, and then back stitch it. And this might not be a straight stitch. This might be a back stitch. I don't really know my stitch names very well. I should look that up. <laughs> so this might be actually called a back stitch. But that is what I'm going to do. And this will end up filling in the whole line of thread all along it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the couch, fill in all of the white, and then my plan is to continue working uh, through all of the colors. So I'm going to go white and then red, orange, yellow, green, a light blue, a dark blue, and a black. And I figure that, you know, eventually I won't be able to go all the way. So I'll just do like a section here and then here and then here and then here until we get this all filled in. So this page is going to end up being really super rainbow colored and I think it will end up looking super cool. So once I get this done, I will come back over here to the craft table and we'll move on to assembling the rest of this spread together. Okay friends, so I have completed all of my stitching on this photo. I'm gonna hold this up here so you guys can see this. So I just did two of each color and I have, I think I have eight colors total. So there's 16 lines of stitching going around in a circle to create this oval pattern where the colors match up with the colors inside of this journaling card over here. So now that I have that done, uh, the other thing that I did is because there was so much texture on the back, I was worried that it might not adhere to the back side of a different page later. So I did go ahead and stitch this whole page down on top of plain white cardstock. So that's going to give this a very smooth back. So now I can add adhesive to this and set it on top of whatever comes next in the book. Uh, so that is stitched down with the machine stitching. Um, so that completes this side of the spread. So what I have left to do here, I'm not doing anything to the journaling card. I'm not doing anything to this little photo. I'm just going to pick one of these pattern papers to cut into a three by four card, and then um, we'll adhere down this uh, arrow on top of it. So I had originally picked out these three patterns and really this blue one would have worked as well. And so what I did is I lined them up here with the arrow just to see what I thought. Immediately this one was out because it's just it's too busy next to all the busy um, and with the black and white I, I wanted there to be a little bit more color. So then I went to this green and blue one. Uh, if we put this one in here this one is okay uh, but again it's I don't know, there's something about it that makes it feel really busy next to this page. So I also decided to not do that one. Then I went to this blue. Now the blue is actually pretty nice. It's subtle with the arrow on top. The arrow, you can't really see all that great, uh, but that would have been okay, I think. And then the last one I tried was this one right here. And I actually think I like it with the darker colors maybe. Um, so I can put it either way with the pink in there. Actually, maybe I like it this way. I think I like it this way. And I actually like this one the best because even though it still has a bunch of the colors in there, I think because it's the paintbrush stripes, it doesn't feel as busy as the overlapping triangles or as this black and white polka dot. So I'm going to cut this into a three by four card. You know, we'll just do this right here because this is just gonna take me a minute. So there's no sense in speeding you up for this. So I am going to cut this into a four inch by three inch and it might already be three. Nope, it's a little bit wider than three. So a three by four card here. So that gives me my pattern. And then I'm going to take this embellishment that I had created previously on canvas paper. I'm going to add some adhesive to that. And then with my tweezers, cause it just helps me to make sure I'm putting things on here straight. Uh, we'll line it up here and put this right in the middle, right about there, I'm gonna say. And then these pieces can go, I might keep this in my scrap bin and that will toss. So uh, that will complete this spread for today. The only other thing I might wanna do 
and not might, I actually do want to do is put the date on this for when I created this spread. And these I can move off of here as well. So I'm gonna grab my date stamp. Um, if you're looking for a roller date stamp that has, you know, current years on it, this stamp goes up to 20, let's see, it's 27, 28. This goes up to 2028. Um, and I have it linked in my description box. So if you're looking for a roller date stamp, uh, you can find it there. It's through Amazon. Um, and I just want to add the dates. I'm thinking I might put it right here. Because uh, I don't I don't really want it here. So yeah, let's just put it sideways. So this is going to be, this would be January 1st. So this is going to be January 15th is what I want to put the date as. Even though the photo is not from the 15th, the photo is actually from the day after Christmas, but that's okay. The story is from today. So 15th of January, 2021, that gives me my date on there. And that is going to complete this spread. So uh, what I wrote in my journaling for this project, I said um, for each of the words, each of the this word, there's like a separate sentence or a separate idea that all relates to the same story. So I said, how cute is this dinosaur coat? It was a birthday gift from the Grants and I just love it. The first time you went outside in the snow, you refused to wear gloves and you ended up throwing a fit. You quickly learned that the only way to play in the snow and not get cold is to actually bundle up. On this day, we all went outside to play in the snow. You were so unsure of it and acted super timid. We held up a snowball and told you to lick it. We told you that it was like ice. You instantly understood. Then was the proverbial lick, the one that started your snow eating obsession. You loved it so much that you refused to put the snowball down to go inside. So we let you bring it in. We put it in a bowl, mixed in some raspberry drink powder, and you went to town eating it like it was ice cream. After that, you decided to, you decided you loved ice, AKA snow. And, uh, wait, what did I say? After that, you decided to love ice and you spend your outside time eating the heck out of it. I wonder for how long you'll call it ice. I think it's so cute, a word with your own special meaning. Uh, so that is that is our journaling for this one. So I really love the way that this turned out. Um, again, the journaling card here, these two pieces came from that action story kit. And one of the things I love about these story kits is you don't always have to use the exact theme. So even though this was about action, my spread really has nothing to do with action. It's just telling a story about something that happened recently using the prompt this uh, and then this frame thing that came from from one of those cards so anyway you know that is also one of the things i love about hybrid too is you can take you can take kits like these and just make them all your own so i hope that this inspires you to check out the action kit and see what stories you can tell with it and whether those stories are about oh, there's a cat whether those stories are about doing something uh with action or not um Yes, if you guys did enjoy this process video, I would love a thumbs up down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button while you're there so you can see all of my future crafty videos. I will be back again on Wednesday with my next Project Life spread for 2021. I also have a bonus video tomorrow on Tuesday uh, for some previous year's Project Life uh, processes and those are available over on the mighty network so if you are not part of the mighty network and you would like to see some older project life years that i'm working on now uh, you can check those out there the link is down in that description box so um otherwise i will see you guys on wednesday for project life 2021 until then i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and i will catch you in the next video bye now